Hey everybody from Bose Dagnab CBs. Uh, here's a little tech tip. I thought I'd start doing a little tech tips, um, little freebies for those of you that can handle a solder gun, kind of know what you're doing, and can identify uh, certain components and circuit boards, uh, sections of circuit board anyway. But for the quick fundamentals here, for those of you that are just not quite sure, if you have a good multimeter or any kind of, uh, I mean, this is a digital one, you can get an analog one. Anything that has the, uh, the beep whenever you have a grounded circuit or a completed circuit. If I touch these two together, I want my coffee mug. It was empty. I'm all laid up on drugs. I've had surgery, so not much I can do around the house. See, I got a nice beep, which means I have either a short or a completed circuit without any resistance. Now, to find your main ground on your circuit boards of your CVs, if you look at like your transformer legs here, these big guys right there, this is a unit and grant XL. This one's mine. It's not for sale, so please don't don't ask. Um, also, I mean, here's a. Uh, you see it, they use this anchor here for this jumper. Uh, it's a coaxial jumper. Um, here's a ground leg. Anything, if you follow the, the bigger traces of your board, big wide areas, this is all your main circuit board ground. And if you also look up here on the edges, you know, where you have all your screws to keep your circuit board down to the frame, these are normally cut away from your main circuit board ground, but it is considered part of a ground. It's just not uh, very complete. It's, uh, and this one doesn't even have a space around it to become a ground. But what I ended up doing, uh, the issue with this radio I was having is uh, anytime I would use a power mic, even with the power mic turned halfway up, but with my mic gain turned all the way up, I would get horrific feedback. And my SWR was always crazy high. So uh, I say crazy high. I mean, in the two to one range, which is, is not, it's not too high. And, but uh, you do lose receive and uh, output capability. But the main thing was, is I was getting this squeal every time I would key up my mic with it too high. And it's called RF feedback. Basically, your radio is not getting enough out okay it's getting it's getting plenty uh, plenty of uh, power is just end up somehow coming back into your radio so uh, most of your radios that you get to, in today's world will have these ceramic disc uh, capacitors going from your uh, your frame ground which has its own ground to your circuit board ground well, this one didn't have it. I don't, uh, you know, I've only been in a couple unit and grants and see, I don't know if uh, the last tech took them out or the ones I've seen before had a tech put them in. Uh, but I, I never had this issue and so I started uh, upgrading some of the output capability on this radio. As you can see, I have Volta Finals, which everybody's like, oh, it's not a good idea. And it's, it's not if you're using raw power going straight out. But this has kind of been dumbed down here and there to keep it from, um, Overvolting the final and ruining the final, um, and yeah, I did the the cheap trick on the uh, modulation. But you know what? It's my radio. I do what I want. But even with this at stock, it was giving me that bad feedback. So I added these. These are ten nanofarad or nanofarad. Uh, if you need, if you have a bunch of discs, uh, uh, capacitors lying around, you don't know what the actual value of them is. 103 is what you're looking for on the uh, on the label. That's their identifier. 103 is um, 10 nano or 10 nano. Uh, how are you say? I say nano because it's funner. Uh, anyway, I've used. Here's my receive side, and here's my audio side. Okay, um, here's your audio IC right here, and this is your power IC. This is a, a older type. Uh, they don't even use the, um, I want to say it's 7 or 8 leg and the 12 leg, or is it 9 and 12? I don't remember. So I'm, I'm kind of doped up. But um, 
uh, this being the audio side I'm given getting issue in audio and in my receive so I used these capacitors see here's the ground to my frame and that solder and I was not very good because of the the way I, I ended up reusing these from an old radio that I have for parts just because they were easier to manipulate than than this style my newer ones but uh, anyway, I soldered this to ground, my circuit board ground to frame ground. Circuit board ground right here to frame ground. And the same over here, this IC leg right here is actually for my uh, circuit board ground. And then I have, I, w I just went straight to the, to the wall because I didn't have any um, uh, screws nearby to solder to. And, and that's fine. If you can scrape off the the um, coating they put on here, the protective anti-rust coating, and scratch it up to where the solder has something to grab onto and then clean it with flux. Uh, you'll be able to get that on there. It takes a little bit longer because it's a larger area to, to warm up, but um, it, it'll work. You just gotta be patient. But anyway, that's my little tech tip uh, for today to solve any uh, RF feedback, high squeals, especially if you have an amp. If you have an amp, forget it. It's just going to um, uh, squeal at just about any level, and your SWR is just going to be ridiculous. So, there you go. That's uh, your tech tip of the day from uh, Bose Dagnab CB Radios. Y'all have a good one out there. Be safe. And 73s.